Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is uh, Mulukana Damsagad. I'm a researcher in the Institute of Agricultural Engineering and Bioeconomy here in Potsdam, Germany. Uh, together with my colleague, Philippe Grundemann, uh, we present to, to you today uh, part of the results that we have been working in Rubismo projects. So uh, today in particular, we aim to uh, discuss with you on how to create a supportive uh, business environment. So uh, I share the, the presentation and also the discussion part with, uh, with Philip. So um, this will be uh, the outline of um, our talk today. So I don't want to go in detail here. So, um, I mean, let us all assume, let's say we have someone, a successful business model, let's say, which fascinates you, like one, one successful business model. And that business model doesn't operate in a kind of in a vacuum, rather it can only function under certain external condition. And we define that external condition as which operating under which, con which the business operating as a business environment. So a business environment encompasses all the action situations that surround a company, including the, uh, the actors, uh, the political frameworks, it could be uh, the rules and regulations which is governing it, uh, the knowledge generation, the capacity building, and also, let's say, the consumer's value as a perception and so on. So the business environment, here we are referring to uh, all factors that are external to a business, but which facilitates or hinder in some ways also which influences the business activities and its performances. And of course, this happens not just only at the local level, but it, it happens at the regional, at the national, and beyond. In order, to, in order to assess the performance of this business environment, we use uh, five success factors, which is including, as you see in, uh, below, steering structure, cooperation, uh, process, learning innovation, and strategies. So uh, the question that we raised at, at, the, at the start was, what are the needs of the businesses in rural areas and how the actual condition in the business environment look like? So for this, we, uh, we subcategorize into seven different sub arenas. The first important factor or subcategory that we found is technology and knowledge. And this refers to the generation and fusions of knowledge, which including let's say research and development, of the technical innovation for the production and provisions of value added products and services. And in particular, this is a case for emerging and innovative businesses in rural areas, requiring creating conditions to facilitate the translations of, of uh, available technologies and non-technological innovation into commercial products. And the second one, is referring to resource and infrastructure. And this is referring to the availability and access to infrastructure. It could be in terms of facilities, uh, communication, infrastructure, or overall general services that businesses need to produce and provide their goods and services. And uh, the next one is, of course, training and education. And this refers to the types of actions and measures that are needed to capacity building and the development of skills and innovative, uh, innovative and even to improve the products and the services to enhance the competitiveness of the businesses. And of course, what is quite also important is uh, rules and regulation. And these rules and regulations is referring to uh, the various forms of uh, procedures, rules, uh, even the policy frameworks, uh, which is designed by actors in the realms of the business. These include, let's say, the public agents, the associations, and networks. So these rules and regulations, they are referring to, um, uh, to as, as enabling or governing institutions. They, they determine, among other things, for instance, decision-making procedures, limits, and requirements for actions. And the next one is uh, the consumer's value, their perception, which means what kinds of knowledge, what kinds of values, awareness, and the perception or attitude that the business consumers have towards the product and the services provided by the business. And of course, uh, the issue of funding is always the case. So which is referring to about the availability and access to funding resources 
let's say for starting up or running a business. This is also another issue which is uh, the needs for the businesses in rural areas. And finally, we have also, of course, the market structure, which is basically uh, encompasses the competitors of businesses and other market players offering similar or substitute goods. So having saying this, these are like the seven categories that we are, um, that we are uh, like basically framing our study. So in the next slide, uh, three slides, I briefly presented to you some empirical evidence that we have found in our study. We have analyzed around 45 business cases across 11 countries in Europe, which are of course purposely selected. And uh, we had two rounds of surveys which are conducted by the local partners in the respective countries. However, the results I'm presenting to you or for, for you uh, do not really represent all of these cases. Rather, we are only focusing on 10, uh, 10 of, the, of the businesses for the sake of time and um, it's like 15 minutes is quite low. So here the results are focusing mainly on the gaps, which means what are actually the needs of the business is and what are the actual conditions in the, in, in the business environment look like. So here, for instance, if you look to in the first spider web, which is gaps in rules and regulations, we observe that rules and regulations are really quite an issue for many of the businesses. We observed there is a, a, a big gap between what the business need and the actual conditions look like in the business environment. This means businesses in rural areas have to deal with various actors. It could be public agencies, networks, cl clusters, and so on to reduce this gap. And similarly, in the second, uh, in the second figure here, you can see that five out of the 10 business cases reported that there is a gap between their product and what they need and the actual co consumer's perception, their values to the, to the product and the services. So there is this two spider web tells you that there is a huge gap among uh, the, the needs of the businesses and the actual conditions. When you come to the, uh, the next categories, this including uh, technology and knowledge and training and education. In, uh, what we have observed is that the subcategories of this technology and knowledge and the training uh, and um, education is really would be an issue mainly for innovative businesses, particularly with the so-called like radical innovations. This is mainly happening due to the lack of knowledge or technology or even know-how and the associated training and educations to support the new businesses. So you have observed, let's say, uh, I guess uh, three, uh, for, three businesses reported these gaps. And these businesses are in a way kind of, kind of very innovative businesses. That's why they have this lack of um, uh, kind of big gap between their needs and the actual conditions in the business environment. Um, when, you, when you have a look to uh, resource infrastructure and also uh, and market structure, we observed that um, there is like few business cases who report that resource and infrastructure and market structure is really, it doesn't seem like, let's say here, it's not so much gap, but this is, you need to assume that we are only referring to 10 business cases. In other business cases, we have observed, of course, for instance, market structure is really quite an issue. They need a kind of high competitiveness, particularly when they are providing conventional products. And, and finally, uh, the gaps in funding, it seems um, out of, let's say the 10 business cases, nine of them say like their expectation is somehow fulfilled, even if they have some issues. But at the same time, this also the previous statement, which I said uh, that this is only referring to the 10 business cases. It doesn't mean that all the rural business cases that we are considered are actually satisfied with their business funding. Uh, with this, I would like to give the floor to, to uh, my colleague, uh, Philip, so that he can uh, guide you to the guidelines for supportive business environments. So what we saw from these results is that some environments in some aspects, some business environments are supportive, not all of them, uh, and certainly not in all super arenas. So the next question for us is what guidelines can be derived from those cases with supportive business environments? 
And the guidelines we're going to present you next, they have been derived from an analysis of the cases of supportive business environments. So those cases which, according to the uh, partners we interviewed, the business owners, the actors in the business environments, uh, where they think this fulfills their expectations and needs. Then we also validated the guidelines and complemented them uh, in a team of experts from the Rubismo project, team uh, experts in the fields of training, education, markets, consumers, resources, regulations, technology, knowledge, funding, and uh, uh, major contributions came here from Irish Rural Link, our partner IFAO, RICE, and gate to growth and ourselves. So um, please always keep in mind that the guidelines we're going to present are not necessarily relevant and applicable to all other contexts which you may have in mind. And we're going to discuss this later on. So the guidelines are presented in terms of their contribution to what we call the five performance factors of a business environment. And we move on to the first performance factors on uh, strategies. And here we observe that supportive business environments include the needs of emerging businesses already when designing research and development strategies. Furthermore, they ensure good infrastructural conditions, in particularly in the field of communication, internet, and transportation. We observed also that supportive business environment arenas develop specific funding schemes. This relates to the subarena funding with the possibility of, of consultations and coaching in the application procedure. And again, in the funding arena, we observed that supportive business environments offer schemes which are adapted to the different phases of the business development. Based on this empirical observations, we can say that a clear and plausible overall strategic direction and well-aligned strategies of the actors in the business environment is crucial for supportive. We head on now to the next performance factor, cooperation. What we observed here is that supportive business environment create partnerships for know-how exchange, not only within the locality, but also with actors from other regions and localities. They support sharing of resources and infrastructure among different stakeholders in their place, and they coordinate training activities and uh, share structures among the actors, especially those who are engaged in training and, edu and education. We also see that um, in those environments, <clears throat> the dialogue between policymakers, public agents, businesses, and other stakeholders has been institutionalized. And this in a way also allows to coordinate lobbying activities of, for example, networks, clusters, and associations at different levels from local to higher levels. Then uh, we observed also that supportive environments facilitate partnerships to access funding. In terms of cooperation, we see that sufficient cooperation opportunities are crucial and a clear understanding who should work with whom and how this is key. Let's now have a look next at the performance factor uh, processes. Here we see that in supportive business environments, the actors, they coordinate their tasks and responsibilities, in particularly among public agencies at local, regional, and national levels. In um, the other subarena, they communicate research outputs to potential consumers and public agencies. In the subarena funding, we see that guidance is offered to access funding and make the application to those funding processes as transparent as possible. And finally, we saw that they provide reliable and transparent rules and regulatory procedures in all kinds of arenas. So here 
To summarize it, a clear understanding of the key processes and agreement on necessary steps for creating supportiveness is of utmost importance. Coming to the guidelines related to the steering structures. Again, I will present some observations from our uh, empirical work where we saw that, the, that there is a common support for hotspots or sh the shared use of infrastructure so that the businesses can share their resources and for example, increase their negotiation power when they are uh, negotiating with service providers. This is something we observed frequently in those supportive business environments. For the more the steering structures in those supportive business environments, they support emerging and pioneer sectors in particular. So they make sure that these sectors and businesses have equal opportunities, for example, to access markets and information, which is a critical resource here. So the informational governance structures are existing and functional. I also want to highlight that supportive business environments have sufficient resources actually to implement the rules, the rules of the game, uh, especially when it comes to rules about consumer and competition protection on markets. Overall, a sufficient operational management and governance structure in each of the sub of the business environment is, I think, a key guideline. Last but not least, the success factor uh, learning and innovation, where we found that supportive business environments actually meet the specific needs in training and education through a networked and cooperative approach. They create awareness for products and services among public agencies, media, and the consumers. And there is a lot of exchange uh, in terms of know-how with businesses and consumers from different contexts. We also see that these environments encourage participation in R&D project activities, and in general provide many diverse opportunities for basic and applied training and education. To sum up as a guideline overall, well-developed and consolidated learning capacities and the promotion of learning and innovation in all superinas is um, crucial here. Some concluding remarks from my side and Molukan may want to add something. We can state that the, from our observations, business environments are truly dynamic and highly diverse. Um, the interactions between the environment and the businesses themselves are very unique. So it's um, not always or not generally possible to generalize and replicate all the solutions which have been practiced in one case. So there is no one size fits all concept, but the guidelines we presented truly need to be adapted to the respective context. And that is something we are aiming for in the remaining uh, time of our project in the different workshops we are going to carry out um, for fostering supportive business environments. And some questions, open questions also to us, which we would like to discuss with you in the next few minutes are what further guidelines need to be considered from your point of view and how can the guidelines be adapted actually to other context, specific context? This is, I think, uh, quite a, a challenging task, as well as uh, the question whether the guidelines can be replicated to other regions and in what context. Also, how the guidelines may have to be applied at the different levels uh, from local to regional or higher levels. Thank you very much for your attention. And we'll look forward to the discussion with you now and your questions.